and welcome back lovely people. Today I thought I'd take a really talk about a really serious subject. Gravity. <laughs> yeah, gravity. I think the best way to look at gravity is to think of space and time as a landscape. And when we look out at the night sky and when we consider the distances between stars, we think it, uh, of it as a void. But in fact, the better way to think about space is a hilly landscape with little hills, big mountains, chasms, whirlpools. The whole of space is a three-dimensional convoluted plane. All over, there's deep diving bits, there's high up bits, there's one or two gentle rolling bits, and then there's enormous kind of chasms of whirlpools of black holes. And that way of looking at space really helps us understand what gravity is. Because how gravity works is purely a definition of a landscape. So for example, your car would roll down a hill, but it wouldn't roll up a hill. Water flows down, but not up. And that's because of the shape of the landscape. And Einstein really defined this in his groundbreaking report on how gravity works as an enormous move on from Newton. Isaac Newton defined gravity as an attractive force and couldn't work out what was attracting things. But Einstein realized it isn't actually a force, it's the shape of nature. And the reason that gravity isn't a force is that it only works in one direction. It attracts but has no repulsive force whatsoever because it's not a force. And I think this, the classic rubber mat experiment, shows how gravity works. A deep, heavy chasm is made by a heavy ball and another planet orbiting it goes into this indentation. And that's how mass distorts space. But is that really true? It seems like a reasonable explanation, but there was one experiment, one groundbreaking experiment that proved it. And it all started with a thought experiment by Einstein. He said, a star, which is normally there, if it was behind the mass, the gravitational mass of our sun, it would move. And so they chose a star as a distant object that would line up perfectly behind the sun. But of course you can't see it. So they lined it up perfectly behind the total eclipse of the sun. And if they could see that the star moved, they would realize that it was the mass of the sun that was actually bending space. So bending where the distant star appeared to be because light and space was bent by the mass of the sun. So in early 20th century, a quest began to find the bending light star. But it's a really hard job. But astronomers all over the world started looking at stars during the total eclipse. And the reason you could see a star is because the the disk of the sun is masked. And eventually this brilliant British mathematician, Edgerton, found the star had moved. And that proves that the mass of the sun actually bends the light and the position of space in relationship to where we are as the observer on Earth. And we saw the star in a different place. So I woke up this morning thinking, you know, the best way to describe space is a landscape. As I said earlier, of hills and valleys and chasms and mountains. So that's why I don't think we're going to get anti-gravity devices, because I don't think it is a force. It's a idea 
of defining the shape of something which you can't see. So imagine it's just a invisible landscape, an undulating thing in space that causes things to be attracted, to fall down holes and be closer together. So how on earth could you actually have an anti-gravity machine? Because there's no particles, there's no nothing tugging on something or pushing it away. It's purely that items like a planet fall into these undulations and when you fall into a rubber mat with a with a bowling ball in the middle, you go round and round and round, and that's exactly what we do. What do you think? Because I value your views. So the discussion for you patrons today is, what do you think forms the force of gravity? Mm -hmm.